I'm going to come to um, Alex Godfrey on GM and then Robert Laster on pigs. If I could, Alex, please, first. A question for the Commissioner. In January this year, BASF announced that it was abandoning its efforts to sell genetically modified products, including its Amflora potato, in Europe because of overwhelming opposition to, to the technology. Commissioner, are you worried about the likely loss of research jobs to places where GM crops are being produced and sold and the negative impact this will have on the competitiveness of European agriculture? And do you think you have a responsibility to safeguard the future of agriculture, even in the face of what might be tran transient populism? Robert. A question for uh, Secretary of State, Caroline Spellman. Thirteen years ago, the previous government brought in a unilateral ban on sow stalls. Since then, the size of the UK pig industry has halved. I've heard you say in another forum that we should export more, but it's clear the rest of the world doesn't want our more expensively produced pig meat. We have, in effect, exported the welfare of 500,000 sows. And as a result, we import over half the pig meat. And of that, in excess of 70% is illegally produced under UK rules. From January next year, stalls will be illegal in Europe. It's well known that a large proportion of the EU pig industry will continue to keep sows in stalls after that date. What will you do, Secretary of State, to ensure that we don't continue to import illegal pig meat? What will you do to ensure that UK consumers have the opportunity to buy UK-produced pig meat at our higher welfare standards? What will you do to return the size of the UK pig industry to a level that reflects our food security requirements? Commissioner, first, um, Alex, comment on, on GM technology. Yeah. So, first of all, I don't want to comment a decision of a, a private company who can have uh, his uh, own uh, reasons to, ta to, to take this decision. On GMO, the European Commission, it's rather clear. Every time the Commission took a decision based on scientific uh, uh, observations and scientific conclusions. And the problem, the blockage of this decision were not with the Commission, but with the Council. Because even one uh, times the council wa was not able, the council of ministers was not able to, talk, to take a majority decision in favor of against uh, GMO. So the problem was not with the commission. And this is why now the commission uh, proposed it to member states to give more flexibility on, the, on this uh, kind of decision at uh, national level after, of course, the impact assessment did by uh, EFSA at European level, so the scientific uh, impact uh, assessment. But uh, then we cannot to not take into account the perception of the large public, because we talk about food here. We don't talk about cars of, uh, or, I, I don't know, another uh, good, uh, private good. We talk about food. And you know that the reaction of, uh, of consumers is very emotional when you talk about food. And you also know that uh, uh, European consumers are very exigent with the quality and the content of food. So we cannot to not take into account this. Of course, we, have, we need more dialogue, but we also cannot risk our uh, confidence of our consumers in our capacity to produce food in line with their accept, ex, uh, acceptation. Uh, regarding uh, uh, biotechnologies or new technologies and research and innovation, uh, as I mentioned, the European Commission proposed to strengthen the budget for research and uh, innovation. And research and innovation and new technology don't mean only GMOs. Uh, maybe we can find also other solutions more adapted to also the expectation of our uh, citizens in order to reinforce the capacity of uh, our agriculture to produce more and to produce uh, better. So we are very attentive with uh, 
our capacity to maintain and to reinforce the research and innovation in line with agriculture, but we also have to take into account the expectation of our citizens, of our consumers, if we want to maintain the confidence of our consumers in our food. Also. It, yes, Commissioner, sorry, I, I, you know, we, we understand those issues, but there, is, there, is a, there are some real concerns that we end up sort of having a, a two-speed Europe, we find there's then restrictions on trade, and at the same time, you know, these consumers are travelling in their millions around the world and eating the same food that we reject in Europe. And our big concern is actually we end up importing the food that's fed on cheaper rations because we can't have those products in Europe. It's our competitiveness, the point we've been trying to make about competitiveness, and therefore we do hope that your um, commission can give some leadership and make sure the flexibility, and I know the Dane, Danish presidency is trying to, to move this forward, um, can have some leadership from, from DG Agriculture as well. The, the, commission, the commission was, you know that this, uh, this issue on the GMO is in the portfolio of John Dali, uh, my, my colleague John Dali. But the commission as a college was maybe the only institution who took a leadership in this question. Nor the European Parliament, neither the uh, European Council uh, took this uh, leadership to, to talk, to explain uh, to the people. But as uh, Commissioner for Agriculture, again, I cannot to not take into account the, the signal that we came from the public. Because if we talk about competitiveness of our agriculture, competitiveness means, first of all, confidence of our consumers. Without this confidence, we cannot be competitive with uh, our agriculture. So this, please, integrate also this aspect and not give the impression that you work or we work against our expectation of our uh, citizens. I think it's important for our competitiveness uh, in the future. Thank you. Well, before Caroline B pick up on, on the pigs, could I get Joe Mitchell down to ask the last question of the Commissioner, because I know he needs to be going. So, sorry. But sorry I, did just, I just, just want to chip in on the, on the GM question. So I want to be you know, absolutely clear that that confidence comes from having a really strong science base um, to the decision making, which comes back to Robert's original question about making sure we invest in that science base. I mean, it, it, GM, I think, resulted out one of the tools that will be integral to delivering sustainable intensification and helping to address food security as long as it's used responsibly. And we have to keep on investing in the science base. And so I just wanted to provide some assurances there. I mean, DEFRA has authorized trials of blight resistant potatoes at the Sainsbury Laboratory and uh, nematode-resistant potatoes at Leeds University and has in trial, I think, this year an aphid-resistant wheat at Rothamsted. So I just want to give you that assurance that we go on investing in that science base because Robert is right to point to that. That's going to be part of our uh, uh, global competitiveness. Robert, on the, on the pigs, of course, the, the, w Jim and I are well aware that the deadline is approaching where compliance... Uh, with EU uh, legislation banning uh, so, uh, stalls and tethers uh, comes into force or it becomes um, uh, uh, subject to a fine if not implemented in January next year, January 2013. And it was our ex bad experience with compliance on the welfare of egg-laying hens where, you know, Farmers here made the investment in cages which provide a better welfare for those hens, where some member states didn't and are now facing the risk of being fined, and quite right too. They had a long lead time when they should have made that investment. We are part of a common uh, market and a, and a common policy in which common rules apply, and where those who don't comply with them must face the consequences. So we've seen this danger with um, stalls and tethers coming and we signaled really early on that we don't want a repeat of what happened over the welfare of egg laying hens. But going back to the principle of why those welfare arrangements <coughs> were made, it was because that's what consumers here were asking for. Consumers here in particular want high standards of animal welfare. And I think one of the strengths of the Made in Britain brand, which extends beyond our shores, is that consumers around the world know that when you buy the Made in Britain brand, you are buying foods that are made to high standards of animal welfare, you know, as well as food safety. So I think we have to lay hold of the 
selling point that we have with that Made in Britain brand and make sure that all our counterparts in Europe play by the rules. Joe Mitchell, has he got to the microphone? Just the last question, Joe Mitchell. I haven't got a Joe Mitchell. Obviously disappeared or been held up. Look, I was already running late, Commissioner. Um, we're already at 14 minutes past. Just a, a really big thank you for you giving up your time. I know you have to um, go and do an interview now. If there's one thing I could leave you with, we can have the Secretary of State here for a bit longer to do some questions. The graph I showed you of where um, we sit in England and Wales below the EU 15, the, the key competitors we've got, um, we really look to you, and, and the Secretary of State will think I'm being a bit provocative now, we look for you, Commissioner, to make sure that we don't end up as farmers slipping further down that league table. We know, and, and I, I disagree with um, the Secretary of State about saying that the single farm payment in some way makes us less competitive. In these volatile times, in markets that are um, volatile around the world, meddle with and distorted by other people, the climate, the drought we've had, and as one of the questions I'm going to call next told me of a field of wheat that averaged 0.6 of a tonne to the acre this last year, the single farm payment is really important to us, and if it's going to be unraveled, it must be done evenly across Europe and we shouldn't be pushed further out. So thank you very much indeed for your attendance, and we wish you well, and we want to work with you in the future discussions of the CAP. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for this uh, invitation. And uh, now at the end, I just want to make you sure that... Uh, English and Welsh farmers are not less important for me than Romanian or Polish or, uh, I don't know, French or other uh, farmers. You are farmers in Europe, you are European farmers, and CAP is also for you. Thank you very much. Right, I don't know if I can grab some people quickly to the microphone. Andrew Blencar and Stuart Yarwood and Charles Sercombe. Andrew Blencarin, can I see Andrew? Um.